everybody, Levi Clay here, and I'm back again for part two of these little melodic minor series videos. Now this one is going to be a lot more practical. You're going to have to deal with a lot of fingerings and really go away and learn all of these things. Very, very important that you learn each one of these. Now first I'm going to give you context. So in the last lesson I talked about the melodic minor scale as being uh, the Dorian mode with a raised seventh, and that absolutely is the case. I will always use the melodic minor scale in that context. And when you really look at it, that makes sense because when we take the actual melodic minor scale, uh, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C, sharp, D, bit volume, uh, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and D. The chord that you will find in there, if you take the, the root, and then the third, which would be F, the fifth, which would be A, and then the seventh would be C sharp, those four notes when played together give you this chord sound. Which is actually what's called a D minor major seven. It's a D minor triad with a major seventh on top. Now, the reason I have to draw this to your attention is that's not it does come up in music don't get me wrong you will have to play that chord great example would be right in there you've got a minor a minor major seven and then uh, yeah you can think of that as being c and a d or you can think of that as being a minor very common in music in latin music especially that it's starting to sound like Carlos Santana right you will hear that and that is there's a minor major seven chord uh, right there in that or even the James Bond chord which would be probably playing the right key right that's also a minor major seven chord. In terms of its family, it's actually a minor major nine. Anyway, I'm getting carried away. So my point is that this scale, actually you don't hear it too often in the correct context. Your context. You'll always hear it in a slightly outside context. You're usually gonna hear it being played over a minor seven chord. But for the sake of tuning your ears into the scale, each one of these backings, each one of these performances, I've done over a minor major seven chord. So um, yeah. I'm trying to think what I actually recorded. It's uh, yeah, it's literally just it's like synth stuff played on on the keyboard, and I'm just literally playing a minor major seven chord. This type of thing. So that's the harmony. That's going to be super important. So we've got five fingerings to deal with here. Get them under your fingers. Super important. Here's the first one. It sounds like this. Listen to it. Check it out, and then I will come back and I'll explain it to you in detail. some sound right it's a really interesting and ear twisting sound so what are we doing there well i'm playing uh, down here between the second and fifth fret area of the guitar and as i'm like a caged perspective kind of guy this is me thinking out of that c shape <laughs> I have that chord you know my sound is always going to be there um, now this ties in nicely with you know everything you will already know about scales if I play the minor pentatonic scale starting on that note <laughs> 
when I'm doing all of that, that's me thinking of, you could, you might say shape three, I kind of think C. That's root, flat third, fourth, fifth, and flat seven. And the same would happen if I was thinking Dorian in this place on the neck. My fingering for that would be... don't know Dorian as I said in the, the last lesson you're not going to be able to nail this stuff you need to know that Dorian thing now what happens is that as I said the melodic minor scale is Dorian but with a raised seventh so the Dorian scale is one two flat three four five six and flat seven <laughs> melodic minor scale would be that same thing but we're raising our C natural to a C sharp. I'm going to play that on the B string and you'll see why in a second. Well no actually you won't see why in a second, I'm going to tell you why because that would be where I would play my natural seventh on a chord or in the major scale or you know that's where the seventh lives to me. If you think of the seventh as being here, sure it does live there and I know that it lives there but I'm thinking a different area of the neck. I'm thinking like This area of the neck when I put my seventh there. So seventh here, melodic minor, C shape. So the fingering for that would be five on the A string, and then two, three, five on the D. Then we've got two and four on the G. And here's the tricky part: four notes on the B string, two, three, five, and then six. Now don't do that with four separate fingers. You don't want to do this. I mean, maybe you do, but <laughs> when you watch the pros do this, and this is absolutely how most guys are fingering the scale, from Mike Stern, who's obviously a bit more traditional jazz, bebop, rock type thing, but actually even Frank Gambali, I recently transcribed all of his um, Harmony and Theory stuff, and when it comes to him playing melodic minor, it was fascinating to see him fit so neatly into these caged fingerings. You don't really think of Frank as being that kind of guy, but you know he does this all the time. So four notes on the string, you want to practice always shifting on the last finger. So and when I'm descending and then on the final string we've got uh, three and five. So that fingering would sound like this. If you want to take it all the way down. You can of course do that and that's a good thing to do. Just try and keep track of that chord. So just spend some time getting to grips with that. Me getting carried away, of course. So that would be our C shape or shape three. Uh, very important that you get that fingering down. So maybe pause the video and get comfortable with that and then come back and we will look at another position. Done that? Cool. So here's me playing through the next position for you. Sounds like this.
right, nice and easy, exactly the same approach as before. I'm thinking around my, you could call this the A shape, or shape four, however you want to think of it. I should, you know, really stress this. When my root note, where root note is on the A string, played with my first finger, that's me thinking shape four or A shape. Doesn't matter if it's major or minor or dominant or diminished, it really doesn't matter to me. All of my intervals are seen in relation to my root note. So it could be D major. When I do that, that's me thinking this A major chord, or it could be D minor. Doesn't matter, minor pentatonic, blues. Dominant. So well, that's always me thinking root note on the uh, A string there. So it's A shape to me. There are only 12 intervals and I know them all really well. So as with the previous shape, the C shape, do you know Dorian? One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, root. Oops. So that would be the Dorian mode, but we're playing melodic minor, which is Dorian with a raised seventh. And I talked about this when talking about shape three. The seventh in, in uh, shape three, or C, would be here, well the seventh here is... So, so let's uh, play the fingering for that nice and slow. That's five, seven, eight on the A. We've got five, seven on the D. Four, six, seven on the G. Five, six, eight on the B. Then five, seven, nine on the high E. you'd have a minor major seven chord like this. So that's our A shape. Go away and practice it. That's very, very important. And then uh, I will be back to uh, do the G shape. So you good? You done? You paused it? You done what you needed to do? Cool. So here's a clip of the G shape. Sounds like this. So your ears should starting to be get uh, getting attuned to this now. You should really be able to hear this sound quite uh, well in your inner ear. That's super super important. G shape would always be a root note on the low E string, played with the little finger or the third finger. But point is, anytime I have a root note here and I'm seeing notes behind that in my mind, that's categorised as G, the G shape. You could think shape five again, minor pentatonic. <laughs> B 
be uh, shape five, so or G shape. Again, I jump between letters and numbers. In my mind, I don't really kind of think when I play. It's just you know playing sounds. Anyway, so in this place on the neck, Dorian again would be one, two, flat three, four, five, six, and flat seven. <laughs> Dorian mode. Now, melodic minor, Dorian with a raised seventh. So you should know what this is going to look and sound like now. Now, again, you'll notice this is a personal choice thing. If you want to be strict about cage fingerings, you'll do it this way. But when I'm improvising, I'll do it both ways. I don't really mind. You can either play that seventh on the D string or on the G. If I'm thinking G shape, then my seventh will be on that G string. If I'm thinking, you know, kind of hybrid. I'll you know, play it in both places. But yeah, for me, for this fingering, I'm gonna play that seventh there. So uh, we've got 10 on the low E. And you'll notice all of these shapes, I'm always starting on the root note, right? It's a good way to program them in. So 10 on the low E. 7, 8, 10 on the A, then we've got 7 and 9 on the D, and then we'd have 6, 7, 9 and 10 on the G, again four notes on that string. We'd have 8 and 10 on the B, and then we would have 7, 9 and 10 on the IE. Now. We're getting to the advanced stuff now, not in terms of fingerings, none of this is advanced. But when you're practicing this and learning this, I think it's very, very important that you're trying to focus on intervals. So you can stop me anywhere. I can go, there's my sixth, there's my seventh, flat third, uh, fourth, major seventh, sixth, five flat four to three, uh, five, sorry, five flat five to four. some wrong notes but why not so flat third fifth seventh second root third fifth fourth seventh sixth root that's really going to help you get to grips and be able to use this scale quite melodically because you have a sense of uh, you know intervallic importance so well, you can probably tell from the you know the scroll bar at the bottom, but I'm not going to do the next shapes. Uh, we're going to save that for the next part of the video, which obviously will come tomorrow. But I don't think you need it, or at least you shouldn't need it. You know you're doing well on this when you can listen to what we've done in this section of the video, and you can then go forth and work out the other two shapes. So I'm going to encourage you to go away and do some of that, and come back tomorrow, and you know we'll we'll do the rest of it. Um, yeah, don't worry, still more two days of content coming. So, <laughs> uh, Lastly, of course, want to say a huge thank you to these people over here. These are some of my supporters over on Patreon.com. These guys request videos, and this was a video that was requested by uh, absolutely none of them. This was something that I thought was very important because this is a sound I'm using all of the time when I'm doing the jazz and the blues thing, and, um, you know, it's a real ear twister. And I often get asked, you know, what was that note? What was that sound? And it's usually always this. You can get a lot of mileage out of this. Um, and I just sort of present it as matter of fact, you know, oh, that's melodic minor shape four or whatever. Um, and I often find that all of my students and patrons, they kind of struggle with knowing that stuff. So, um, yeah, this one is for those guys, uh, but it's for you too. So if you'd like to join us over on Patreon, you can do so by checking this button up here. You can subscribe by clicking this button down here, and you'll find two more of my videos here and here. I'll be back again tomorrow for uh, the next part of this. What would that be? Part two? Yeah, part three. Part three, uh, where we will do two more shapes, and then I will give you some tips and pointers for moving between positions, which, of course, is very important if you don't want to be stuck in the box. Anyway, I will see you tomorrow. Much love. Bye.